Valley Talk on News Talk 1580 KGAL. And welcome to Valley Talk, a beautiful day in the neighborhood, and uh, glad to have you with us today. 11.06 is the time, it's Monday. Hope you had a chance to enjoy the Lebanon Strawberry Festival. It was a warm day for the parade on Saturday, but it was a nice parade as always. Uh, everybody that put it on did a great job. It was great to see the community come out and support an event like that and get to know their friends and neighbors, and just a fun time to be had in Lebanon. Hope you were there. Kegal was there. We had about five vehicles in the parade with uh, Vet Talk and Dave Pouch Real Estate Talk. Um, uh, Charlie Eads and Mary were leading the parade off in the Kegal van, and it was just nice to see everybody there. So um, if you were there, glad to see you, and glad you were turned out to enjoy the Lebanon Strawberry Festival. It's Valley Talk. I'm Dave Adams. We are going to be talking about a couple of things today. Actually, three things. Let's uh, turn the page here. And uh, something that we've been talking about a lot in the last uh, couple of weeks has been Honor Flight, One Last Mission. Thank you very much for attending the showings May 18th at the Pix Theater in Albany and May 25th at the River Center uh, with the help of many fine individuals, including Jay Bertram of Bertram's Medals. All of us all together raised more than $5,000 to send World War II veterans from the mid Willamette Valley on an honor flight back to Washington, D.C. So thank you for doing that. Thank you for honoring veterans. Honor Flight is a program where uh, they send World War II vets back to D.C. to see the National World War II Memorial. And uh, there's a push to do this because a lot of these veterans are, most of them, if they fought in World War II, they're getting up there in age. Uh, they're mid-80s to mid-90s, and we're losing about 1,000 of them a day. So there's a big push from the Honor Flight Program to get them back to Washington, D.C. while they're still alive. And you, by being involved, are part of the Honor Flight Network. Thank you for doing that. God bless you. And uh, the veterans uh, appreciate it, and so do we. We are still selling copies of the Honor Flight One Last Mission movie. The movie that you saw, the movie that was shown in the theaters, uh, is being sold for $20 each. And that's a copy for you to keep. $10 of that will go to the Honor Flight National Program, and $10 will go to the Honor Flight Program based in Eugene. And the Eugene Hub uh, coordinates the Honor Flight uh, veterans from the mid Willamette Valley to go on an honor flight. So even though it's based in Eugene, it covers the Albany, Corvallis, uh, Lebanon area, and by supporting that, you support our local veterans to go back to D.C. If you want to find out more about how you can get a copy of the Honor Flight One Last Mission uh, DVD for $20, just send me an email, dave at kgal.com, and we'll see that you get a copy of it. So that's one of the things we want to talk about today. First thing we're going to talk about is elder abuse. In the Oregon legislature today, House Bill 2205 is scheduled to be a, a pass, and it will expand the required reporters list of people that may have seen signs, symptoms of elder abuse to report it to authorities. HB 2205 increases the list to include lawmakers, attorneys, dentists, optometrists, and chiropractors. We talked to Vanessa Timmons a moment ago, the executive director of the Oregon Coalition Against Domestic and Sexual Violence, about the need to expand the reporters, required reporters list and what's going on in the area of elder abuse. We'll have that conversation in just a moment. After that, if you're a pet lover, you'll definitely want to tune in for our conversation with Jenny Sullivan. Jenny is in the studios right now on Valley Talk. Jenny, thank you for being with us on the program today. You're welcome. And we all love dogs, don't we? Oh, yes. I love her business card. She's got a... Is this your dog? A picture of your dog no, on the business card? No. Okay. She's got a, a business card that has a dog's nose. This looks like a yellow lab or... It could be a lab. Yeah, I'd say a lab or a mix. So you've got this yeah. business card and the dog's nose is on it. It's, it's a cute little business card, <laughs> especially if you love dogs like, like we do. <laughs> so we're going to be talking about senior dog rescue. What's going on there? How you can partner or adopt uh, a senior dog? Is it for seniors or older dogs? Maybe both. It, yeah, it could be either way. Yeah. And they're based in Philomath, and so you also serve the Albany, Lebanon area? Right, and, and Salem sometimes. We stretch all, all the way around the valley. So we're going to be talking to, about dogs here in the last half of the show on Valley Talk today. Again, my email address, dave at kgal.com, and that it will be the last topic we uh, visit about today. Coming up later on this week on Valley Talk, we have a special surprise coming up with Vet Talk which is going to be on uh, the 12th, it looks like, second Wednesday of the month. And we have a special uh, program coming up uh, this month on Vet Talk. 
Coming up on the 6th of June, which is this Thursday, we're going to be doing a live show from Legion Post 10, American Legion Post 10 in Albany. We are going to be remembering D-Day, talking to some uh, World War II veterans, other veterans. And what we're looking for specifically is if there's any World War II veterans that hear this report or if you know of some World War II veterans here in the Lebanon, uh, Corvallis, Albany area, we would love to have them on the show to share with their, with us their experiences about uh, the Normandy invasion, which was June 6th. So that's a special show. It's going to be on location at Legion Post 10 in Albany. Again, the contact information for Valley Talk, Dave, at kgal.com. Thank you for being with us on the show. And uh, we will continue with the program here in just a moment. Hey, you're invited to the Crowfoot Baptist Church 50th Anniversary Celebration Block Party, June 8th, this Saturday at 4 p.m. Fun for the whole family with a bounce house and other activities for kids. Free meals starting at 4.30. Classic car exhibit, faith, hope, love, and gospel. House of Cash concert at 6.30. And it's all free. Don't miss the Crowfoot Baptist Church 50th Anniversary Celebration Block Party, this Saturday, June 8th at 4 p.m., 699 Cascade Drive in Lebanon. For more information, call 541-908-4565. 50% of students who drop out of high school suffer from a treatable mental illness. The good news is that treatment works. With treatment, more than 70% of individuals have significantly reduced symptoms and experience a higher quality of life. You can help change a life with Trillium Family Services. For more information, log on to TrilliumFamily.org. Trillium Services in the Mid-Willamette Valley are based at the Children's Farm Campus. TrilliumFamily.org. Building brighter futures with children and families. Prince Anthony was the handsomest man in the entire kingdom. Ma'am, am I handsome? His fondest wish was to find a beautiful bride. Of course, she doesn't have to be as stunning as me. But Prince Anthony couldn't find one. Why? Well, because he never left the palace. Being this pretty isn't easy. He spent all day lifting weights and getting his back waxed. <laughs> and trimming and grooming and tweezing and plucking. Perfecting perfection. Meanwhile, his less good-looking but far more charming brother Benji found a bride. So did his rather unattractive cousins and even his flat-out butt-ugly Uncle Stanley. I don't understand it. I am way better looking. Than any of them. Unfortunately, none of the women in the kingdom knew this because none of them had ever seen him. But if they ever did. But they didn't. So Prince Anthony spent his entire life all alone until he was old and toothless, bald and fat, saggy and rather flabby. At least my back isn't very hairy. <laughs> you may have the best product or service in the world, but if nobody knows about it, you just have the best product or service in the world. It's called advertising, and it works. Your competitors know this. Why don't you? This message brought to you by this station, Adweek Magazine, the Radio Advertising Bureau, and the famous Radio Ranch. Stand by for a free offer. I want to tell you about the Fountain of Youth by Pure Attitude. It's a non-toxic, all-natural, power-packed, anti-aging, waterless formula serum with 100% active ingredients. It creates dramatic results, firmer skin, and less visible wrinkles. It's like Botox in a bottle. The Fountain of Youth was developed by award-winning chemist and health and beauty expert to the stars, David Pollack. When recently featured on the Today Show, all they could say was, I love it. This incredible product increases skin oxygenation, boosts collagen, increases hydration and cell renewal, and results in a tighter, firmer appearance to your face with less visible wrinkles. And now, we want to let you try it for free. Go to freefountainofyouth.com and you'll receive a free 14-day trial of the Fountain of Youth. Just pay a small shipping and handling fee. It makes a great gift because it's beautifully packaged and you'll love the new you. After using dermatologist approved and recommended, the Fountain of Youth. Go to freefountainofyouth.com. Clarity over agreement. Expect it from Dennis Prager, weekday mornings at 9 on Smart Talk 1580. And on the phone with us today, right now on Valley Talk, we have Vanessa Timmons, who's the executive director of the Oregon Coalition Against Domestic and Sexual Violence. And Vanessa, welcome to Valley Talk today. Thank you. Oregon legislature, according to our calendar here, is may give final approval today to House Bill 2205, which would expand the list of required reporters of uh, people who witness possible uh, elder abuse in the state of Oregon. And House Bill 2205 would uh, enlarge the list of required reporters to include lawmakers, attorneys, dentists, optometrists, and chiropractors. Uh, Vanessa, why do you think the list needs to be expanded? I think it's an important tool to um, offer 
offer folks the opportunity and the information that they need um, in order to, to better report abuse. And one of the things that we've learned from mandatory reporting laws, the traditional laws that we have now, is that when we, when we um, identified mandatory reporters, we also um, gave people the opportunity to have a better understanding about what abuse is. And because of that, we have less, um, less of a kind of random response to abuse in our communities and a more co comprehensive response to abuse. Do you think there's more abuse going on now than maybe 10 years ago? And if so, why? Well, that's a really good question. I, I don't know. I don't know that there's more abuse going on. I do know that we, do, that we have more awareness of abuse that's happening. Dennis Prager um, on Smart Talk 1580. I think that we're also, when we think about elder abuse, what we know is that we're an eldering population, that we're getting older as a nation. And I do think that that has, um, that that has allowed for an increase in, a, in abuse for elders. Now, when we talk about elder abuse, give us some examples of what we're talking about, if you could, please. Yeah, well, in my field, you know, I, you know, I'm an advocate for domestic and sexual violence, um, and so I, in my experience, and what I personally worked with is survivors who have had an increase in sexual assault, and an increase in domestic violence, and I, but I also know from from my work that there's an increase in financial abuse. When you're talking about elders, a lot of the time we're talking about people taking and misusing their medications. We're talking about people um, neglecting or leaving elders um, vulnerable, not doing adequate um, care, but also physical and sexual violence. Now, are you seeing, you think, possibly more of the financial abuse, maybe some family members taking advantage of grandma or grandpa and their savings because a lot of people are under stress right now? Mm -hmm. as, as Do you have a sense that maybe we're seeing more of that kind of abuse just because of economic times? Um, we are definitely seeing more of that kind of abuse. And what's an elder person to do? A lot of times they're under the care of this person, and that's the only contact they have with a human. And, and how do they call for help, or how does somebody else know that that situation is going on? It's a really complex issue with elders um, who, just like any survivor of domestic violence or sexual violence, the, the perpetrator is someone intimate to them, someone that they know, someone that they would like to be able to trust. And it's a very difficult decision. And what I always advocate um, my, the survivors that I work with to do is to find someone that they can tell and to keep telling. I think oftentimes people don't want to believe that something is happening. So, so a survivor may tell a, a sibling, another, another family member, and they go and talk to that person and then nothing happens. And, the, and then the elder feels very betrayed and, and not heard, not listened to, minimized. And so my, what I often tell folks is to keep telling until somebody hears you. Tell your clergy, tell your family members, and to never, um, to never stop telling. Um, because what we know about abuse and violence is that it just gets worse. This is not an issue that gets better with time or with neglect. This tends to escalate. One of the issues that can happen, especially with elders, is if somebody is reported, the person who is accused of it may say, well, you know, Uncle Jim is yep. not doing too bright right now, and yep. he's, he's having some issues with remembering, and he just doesn't understand what's yep. going on. So the person that's being, that hears this and wants to do what's right, how do they make that determination? Always err on the side of believing the, the victim. It's, it is so important if, um, to get that message out because the, what makes people more vulnerable um, when they're an elder or when they're a child or if they have some other issue that um, is, leads to a sense of a lack of credibility, that makes them um, an easier target and at increased risk. So the more um, dementia or the more frailty or the more vulnerability that an elder has, that actually puts them at greater risk. So we don't want to look at that as a lack of credibility. We want to look at it in terms of risk. How vulnerable is this elder? How much does this elder need me to intervene on their behalf? 
So I just like to flip those, that thinking on, on, um, on the other side instead of thinking about, oh, this is incredible, say, thinking, wow, this person is, ex- is in extreme risk. What about fears by the elder person who's saying something and for fear that nobody will believe them and then they, they will endure um, retaliation? Yeah, and that's another really important factor. And I think that this is, again, goes out to those who might be um, added to this expanded reporting list. The importance of how do we intervene in a safe way. And one of the things is you never tell, you never disclose something that someone has said to you. You don't go to a family person and say, your, your mom or your dad or whomever told me that you're hurting them or you're assaulting them or that you're taking their medication. You don't do that. You go in and you, you investigate and you think primarily of the safety of the victim. What about the issue of financial abuse? Maybe uh, um, the elder individual goes to a family member and says, well, they're spending money mm-hmm. in areas that, you know, uh, a new car or so on and so forth, and maybe it's a gray area, and what's that person to do? The person who they're reporting to? Yes. About the financial re- abuse? Yeah. I think that, that, and it's not, I don't have the numbers handy right now, but there there are, through the criminal justice system and law enforcement system in every community, of an elder abuse, um, a hotline for reporting elder abuse, and one of, they have a financial investigation aspect of that, and I really say, get those professionals involved. They, they have the resources, the tools, the expertise. Financial abuse is one of those um, complex issues that's very difficult to prove and very um, very difficult to, to understand. And those professionals, in my experience, have been very helpful when I've had to make those reports. They can go in and look at bank statements and they can go in and, and really begin to get access to the information you really need to determine whether financial abuse is happening. That's not something that family members can really figure out for themselves. That's my experience. What about a hotline number? I think it's going to be different in every community. My experience would be to just kind of go in and look for the elder abuse hotline number. Every community is going to have that, either through your county or state um, uh, Department of Human Services. Now, you are the executive director of the Oregon Coalition Against Domestic and Sexual Violence. Mm -hmm. Of the total caseload and the client load that you have, the, the percentage dealing with elder abuse is that percentage increasing as we go forward i know absolutely increasing it is how much increasing um we have 54 member programs in the state of oregon um all of our member programs are domestic and sexual violence programs five years ago i would say maybe 10 percent of them had had some sort of specific programming for elders and that has probably increased to over over 60% of them now have programming, um, information training, technical assistance around working with elders who are victims of domestic and sexual violence. That's a huge shift. That's a huge increase. Why do you think that is? Well, I think that it's linked to our elderly population, but it's also linked to this awareness. I think this is why um, laws and bills like what's happening today are so critical because once you tell people they have to report on this, you, they, you're also telling them you have to learn about this. You have to understand this. You have to know where to make reports about this. And so it really increases community awareness. Um, and that's what's happened. What about the penalties for required reporters let's say this legislation passes and you're an attorney and you know about this and you don't report it and later on it's found that you knew about it you're on the required reporting list and you didn't what kind of ramifications are there for the person who didn't come forward they're really different based on on your reporting mandate i think that for some people it's a licensing issue um it's um so that can affect your ability to to practice your field are you glad to see legislation like 2205 come forward? I am. I am. I'm always really encouraged when um, our legislature and our community folks 
um, look at vulnerable populations and reach out and try to figure out ways to keep them safer. And this is absolutely one of those. When you think about dentists and chiropractors and, and those um, health professionals who might have access to an elder um, privately without a perpetrator handy, they might be a safe person for an elder to tell. And if just giving them that encouragement and support to say, you, you know, when you hear this, we really as a community expect you to do something with that information. That's pretty powerful. What's your biggest challenge right now to provide, to bring all the resources you have to bear to help in the issue of elder abuse? I think the biggest challenge really is that um, these folks are so vulnerable. It's really like you're, you know, like you asked earlier, it's about how credible they are and how at risk they are. And um, so the biggest challenge is really getting people to understand that this happens to our elders, um, that they're incredibly vulnerable to abuse. Um, and that they are, are, they're valuable to us. Our elders are incredibly valuable. And as a community, we need to value them and keep them safer. Vanessa, is there anything you'd like to add in closing? No, I think just in closing to just say, you know, that it's important um, to um, listen to your elders, to embrace them, and to value them. Vanessa Timmons is the executive director of the Oregon Coalition Against Domestic and Sexual Violence and also deals with the issue of elder abuse. How can people contact you if they have more information or want more information? They can look up our website, which is ocadsv.org. And Vanessa, you have a great day. Thank you for taking time and visiting with us on Valley Talk today. The Osgood Files, sponsored in part by LiftMaster Garage Door Openers. Use your smartphone to open or close your garage door anytime, from anywhere. This is Charles Osgood. How do you feel about math? I just don't get it. A lot of American kids are like that. They're not sure what pie means. Unless it's the kind you eat, or being stuck on a lifeboat with a tiger. To many of us, wrestling with math is like being stuck in a lifeboat with a tiger, so our Sunday morning colleague, Mo Rocker. Not only do most of us not like math, we're also not very good at it. In an international test of 15-year-olds, out of 64 countries, the U.S. placed 24th. A visit with Mo to a place called Mo Math, the Museum of Mathematics, after this. Where will you be when you remember you left the garage door open? Halfway to the office? Halfway around the world? Well, if you've got a LiftMaster garage door opener with MyQ technology, you've got nothing to worry about. With LiftMaster, you can use your smartphone or computer to open or close your garage door from anywhere. You can turn your house lights on or off, too. And LiftMaster garage door openers with battery backup keep your garage door working even if the power isn't. Find a dealer near you at LiftMaster.com. What if someone invented a way to find the perfect brand new car that didn't involve driving from new car dealership to new car dealership? Well, Autotrader.com did. By searching our immense inventory of actual new cars for sale, you can see which dealers have the exact 2013 sedan you want. Plus, see who has the best price and compare offers in your area like cashback or low APR. So you can find which dealership has your perfect car and the best deal before ever leaving the house. Autotrader.com, the ultimate new car marketplace. A lot of American kids would rather have less math than MoMath, says Mo Rocca. The Museum of Mathematics, MoMath for short, opened in December in New York City. There, he met co-founders Glenn Whitney and Cindy Lawrence, who showed him around. With $23 million behind it, it feels less like a classroom. Dennis Prager on Smart Talk 1580. Oh my gosh, wow. There's a square wheeled tricycle that somehow rides like a dream. It's smoother than a Lexus. It's great. Magic? Nope. It's math. Go ahead, you can touch. The relationship between math and music lights up. What you're hearing is every sphere we touch, you're hearing three notes, a triad or a chord. You can hear and see the intervals between musical notes. Intervals, fractals, and algorithms are beautiful when you get to know them, says Momat's Glenn Whitney. People who are really engaged with math understand that there's a lot of folks out there that don't see it the same way they do. And they really want to show them the beauty and the wonder and the excitement that they experience. So hopefully we've done that. That's certainly what we're trying to do. The Osgood File. This is Charles Osgood on the CBS Radio Network. Relax. 
Refresh at the Century House Bed and Breakfast. If you're getting away for one day or a week, the hot tub, billiards, library, and a comfy suite will make your getaway a memorable experience. Corporate direct billing and discounts for extended and frequent stays available. Enjoy a great stay with all the amenities at the Century House Bed and Breakfast in Lebanon. Call for reservations. 541-259-5592. 541-259-5592. My car's a sauna. What's with this air conditioning? You need an AC Pro. No any? Yeah. You. <laughs> you got me confused with somebody else. You're a pro with new do-it-yourself AC Pro, the 10-minute cold air solution. But I... You know where to find the hood? That thing up front? Exactly. AC Pro's easy, fast, and saves you money. You'll have your car's AC blowing cold air in minutes, guaranteed. I did it. It's like a freezer in here. Be a pro with new AC Pro, the 10-minute cold air solution. Got a sweater? Kim is in a rush, and a large tree has fallen on her car. She needs to file a claim. Should she A, strap her claim forms to a caffeinated falcon, or B, file her claim on Geico.com? The correct answer is B. It's easy to quickly file a claim on Geico.com and set up an appointment with an adjuster. The caffeinated falcon would probably get disoriented and deliver the claim to some burger joint. Geico.com is much more efficient and doesn't have dangerous talons. Geico. Wherever, whenever. Just a click away with our free mobile app. Want to really know more? Just point, click, and learn from the Mid-Valley's best website, KGAL.com. Welcome to Valley Talk. It is a Monday, 1132 is the time. I'm Dave Adams. Glad you're with us today. Again, if you would like copies of Honor Flight One Last Mission, uh, the DVDs uh, are available $20 each. $10 of that goes to the National Honor Flight Program. $10 goes to the Mid-Willamette Valley Hub which will help pay for World War II veterans from the Mid-Willamette Valley, which is here, to go back to Washington, D.C. on an honor flight. Thank you for supporting the showings May 18th at the Bix Theater, May 25th at the River Center. And as we said before, thank you for everybody. Thank you to the Pix, thanks to the River Center, thanks to Jay Burcham, thanks to the uh, everybody that was involved in putting these showings on. Again, we raised more than $5,000 to send World War II veterans from the mid Willamette Valley back to D.C., and it's all because of you. Thank you for doing that. If you saw the movie or heard about it and want your own DVD copy, the 20 bucks each, the proceeds are split between the national program, local program. My email again is dave at kgal.com. Next part of the program really love this i love dogs and as i know there's a lot of people here in the midwell i valley that share that view with us on the program right now is jenny sullivan she's with senior dog rescue thank you for being with us on valley talk you're welcome so talk to us about senior dog rescue is it for senior dogs is it dogs for seniors how's the program work well it can be either actually but the the main intent in the beginning was for the senior dog the dog that is sitting there at the shelter, no one's picking this dog, everybody's passing by. They want a younger dog, um, they want a puppy, and so um, the woman that started this 15 years ago, Sue Faria, um, saw that many of these dogs were just being left behind. They were still good dogs, they um, were just in, a, in bad situations, and so she thought, gee, I should do something about this and start a program. And so 15 years ago, that's what happened. She started taking these dogs in and getting people to foster them until we, we could get them homed. So why are dogs given up? How do you get the dogs? There's many ways and reasons that they're given up, and it's not because they're bad dogs. It's bad situations. Um, maybe the owner has passed. The owner has got, had to go into a care facility. The family can't take the dog. The family doesn't want the dog. Um, sometimes they're in shelters. Uh, sometimes they are abandoned in, on properties. People move and leave the dog, which is pretty cruel. Um, people now lately are losing their homes, losing their jobs, can't afford to keep a dog um, and, and vet care with that dog. Um, and, and some have just become lost. So what does your program do? Do you have a shelter facility for dogs or do you work with other shelter facilities? We do work with other facilities, shelters, but our primary thing, um, we have people that foster the dogs in their own homes until they're ready to go to their forever home. We have a website where people can go on the website and see what dogs we have. Um, so uh, it's totally volunteer. 
we are lucky at times to get food donated uh, from a food company, Solid Gold, that helps us out with feeding these dogs. A lot of the volunteers will pay for things themselves. Um, we have a vet that we do take our foster dogs to. So basically people that are fostering don't have to put out the money for the vet care. All they have to do is love that dog, walk the dog, enjoy the dog until it gets its forever home. You've mentioned this a couple times, it's forever home. What's yes. the process you use to make sure or at least have a good chance that it is the dog's forever home? Okay, we do have a process and the first step the person finds the dog on, on our web page. They fill out an application. Um, the application is, you know, it asks how much they think realistically a dog would cost to take care of per year. And we never really know the number, but we can tell when they put a good number out there that this person can afford it. Uh, do they have a yard that's fenced in? Uh, you know, if the dog is going to be at home alone, how many hours will it be alone? Do they have a vet in place? So they fill out all the questionnaire. We turn around, we call them, we set up what we call a home visit. We go out to the home to make sure that uh, they aren't a hoarder, for instance, that they really have room for this dog, that they really want. It's they not don't an have impulse. 60 dogs at home. They don't have 60 dogs at home. And it's not an impulse decision. After the home visit, and it's nothing real extensive, it's just to make sure, um, then they go ahead and take the dog home, and we call it a um, pre-adoption trial. They keep the dog for two weeks. During that two weeks, the care from the vet is still available free from the monies we've earned from benefit-type uh, things that we do. And then after the two weeks, um, then we do the final and it's their dog. Transfer vet information and on to the next one. How many, speaking of on to the next one, how many dogs have you placed so far? Uh, this year, we have placed right now 36 dogs and we have about a handful pending finals. Is that typical for a year or are you placing more dogs now? That number is had been for a year. Now we're way ahead, we're way up. Why is that? Um, we did go through a, uh, through a reorganization, and we have a new director now. We have a new board. Um, it all has to do with um, delegating. Delegating and letting people do different jobs. Um, Sue Faria did a wonderful job, and she had a, a wonderful idea. But you can get burned out on this. And so she had decided to step away. And so you get new energy in there. You get new ideas. You know, you get... So I, I would say because of the new energy, the new ideas, and getting back to people timely and just, just being on it. One of the things that reasons that people have to give up their dog is because of economic reasons. Maybe they've lost mm -hmm. a job. Maybe they have to move from a house into an apartment and they can just mm -hmm. barely afford the rent of an apartment and they can't mm -hmm. afford... For example, the pet deposit, right. and so they have to give up their dogs. So you're seeing more of that economic condition as a reason why people are giving up their dogs? We really are. We're seeing a lot of that. And that's where, you know, you're not just working with dogs when these kind of situations happen. Um, these people are really, really attached to these dogs. And so you're making sure that they feel good about their bad situation. Um, that we're going to get that dog the best possible home. We, we explain what we do and what we go through. We let them know what's going on along the way when that dog's being fostered. And then we let them know when that dog gets the forever home. It's not an easy thing to give up a dog that you love. And, um, but sometimes it just has to happen. So it, it, it can make a really bad situation okay. Do you ever have a dog try to go back home? No, never. You know, it's almost funny, you know, when you, when you foster a dog for a while, you think that the dog is just going to want to be at, at your hip. But somehow, I don't know what it is, they know. I could never get my own dog to go with somebody. But these dogs will jump right in the car like, see you later, and they're on their way. It's, I, I, I don't know what it is about that. You know, we, we talk to them as you talk to your own pet. Maybe they hear us. I don't hmm. know what, what it is, but no. Nope. So they imprint on the new person fairly quickly? They do. It's amazing. Dogs are so, um, 
adaptable. They are wonderfully, they're like sponges with wanting love. And um, even ones that we get that are abused, they will trust because they have to. They need food and shelter. But all of a sudden, one day, you'll see that head go up and the tail start wagging. And it's like, you've reached them, you know. And it uh, usually that happens when some their master has passed. And they know in those situations, I think they really know. Do you think dogs have... And I've seen this in dogs in my own life. Dogs sometimes have this uncanny perception of people. And maybe you have a person or know of a person that is having a hard time. There are people that dogs just don't like. It's, yeah. And, and dogs almost have this sixth sense where they mm-hmm. can kind of figure out a person. And it's uncanny. Yeah. It, it's true. It's true. There are some dogs like that. And, and, and on the other hand... There are some dogs, people say, my dog has never gone to anybody like it just did with you. Right. And I I don't know. They can sense something, I guess, that uh, I'm a positive and I'm friendly to them and I just get down and talk with them. And so, yeah. And then on the other hand, there are dogs that don't like other dogs. They may be good with dogs, but certain dogs, they just don't like that dog. And I I ran into that with, with the last one I had, Moose. Um, a lot of the little dogs just did not like him. Was, but he was a big guy. So a dog like Moose would be a big guy. Yes, he should be. <laughs> Why do you do this? How many years have you done Senior Dog Rescue and what keeps you going? Why do you get up in the morning? Okay, um, I started this about five years ago. I had lost my dog. And I didn't know if I wanted another dog again. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't know if I wanted that responsibility. So I had run into um, Petco one day to get some food for my cat. And they were having uh, Senior Dog Rescue Pet Day. And so I started talking to Sue, Faria, about it. And she says, well, why don't you just foster? That way you don't really have a commitment, you know, forever. You just go ahead and foster this dog. And I thought, well, okay, I can do that. Well, we have a saying in in Senior Dog Rescue. I I failed my first foster in that I kept my first foster. And it's a pretty common joke. You're not supposed to do that? Well, You're supposed to be able to say, like, you're like a clearing house for adopted kids. You can't adopt all the kids that come through your house. And likewise, you can't adopt all all the dogs. Right. But, you know, it was a good positive thing. And then I did assure her I would continue to foster because I could do at least two dogs. My I will keep and them one. all. No, no, I can't keep them all. So now I've, I've, um, I have placed uh, 26 dogs. Moose was my last one that I placed. Some stay long, some don't stay that long. And um, a lot of people say, how can you just let them go? Don't you get attached? And I do. But I do keep in touch with some of the people. But seeing how happy that dog is and how happy those people are to get the dog I just can't wait. What am I going to get next? You know, on to the next one. And so that's... Are pets, one of the things that people are dealing with in society right now, a lot of stress because of the economy, jobs, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Do you find that pets are a great stress reliever? Oh, definitely. Definitely. I've had a lot of people tell me. And I know personally, when I lost my husband, I had a dog. And um, sure, I had a lot of friends and people I could talk to, but that dog was with me all the time. And I had her to take care of and, and do things for. So it kept me going. And it really, really made a big difference for me to get back out into life again. And um, so it can be very positive. People that are, they need to exercise, walking the dog. The dog is like your conscience. They will stalk you till you take them for that walk. You know, it's just, it's, it's hilarious, but... One of the things I've done is I've talked to couples. One of the, uh, for a while there, I was a pastor before I came here, and you would mm-hmm. talk to, to people that were having relationship issues. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that both men and women that I found was sometimes if, if they simply couldn't find that right human partner, mm-hmm. they would go for a, an animal, typically right. a dog or a cat, a lot of times a dog. And, and when I asked them why they did that, they said it was a dog shows you unconditional love. It's true. They do. They really do, and we, we do see that in particularly dogs that are neglected and abused. They will come around. You'd think they'd be mean to people. No, they aren't. 
they are totally wanting to be loved and, and, and be there for you and happy to see you. So it's, it's a good thing. It's a positive both ways around. If somebody's looking for a dog, do you actively go out and look for homes for the dogs that you're in charge of finding homes for? Or what, which side of the equation are you? Do you go find the, jo- the dogs or do you go find the new owners or do you do both? It can be both. Generally, people will get in touch with us. And sometimes in talking with them and meeting them and the type of dog they may already have, they want a friend for their dog. Um, we will, just recently I had a case like this woman wanted this one dog and I knew it wasn't going to be a good fit. So I brought this little tiny poodle mix over to her and she fell in love. I just, you get a feeling what's going to work for somebody and what isn't. Um, but generally they do find the dogs on the website and they know what they want and um, it works that way. We go to the uh, shelter maybe sometimes because somebody is looking for a particular type of dog they would like. And so we will call shelters and say, do you have this or do you have that? But generally it's the other way around. In that situation, let's say you've got an older person, maybe they've never had a dog in their life, but Mm -hmm. maybe they're lifelong partner has passed away and they're lonely and they think, well, maybe a dog, Mm -hmm. maybe a cat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, What advice would you give them? Maybe what some of the mistakes they make when they're looking at that as an option? Sometimes they'll think about getting a dog they maybe had in their past when they were a lot younger, a dog that would be too big for them now, Mm -hmm. Um, a dog that may need walking and maybe they can't do a lot of walking. So that's where your little lap dogs come in. And they're perfect. I just placed one uh, lady on the coast, 90 years old, still living on her own. She lost her little dog. And we had um, a little dog, a little chihuahua named Diesel. And she is so in love with him because he likes to sit with her. There isn't a lot of walking involved. She can take him everywhere she wants to go. So... um, it's just perfect for elderly people, the lap dogs. So, uh, so you have to, you know, and it doesn't take much to persuade them. You know, it just... This example of this person, 90 years old, so you mm-hmm. have an older person that's quite up there in, mm-hmm. in years. Yeah. Can a dog help them add life to their years? In other words, keep them active, keep them engaged, keep them moving forward? Totally. I totally believe that because... Some, they have something that's depending on them, something that they need to take care of every day and give them a reason every day. And we have in place in our contract, if that person passes, that we will take that dog back. And this lady knew that she wanted an older dog because she was elderly and she didn't want to get something too young, you know, because of her age. So that was a good fit for her and the dog. And she's just so happy. <laughs> Senior Dog Rescue, what's your contact information? How do people get in touch with you? Um, if you go online, sdropetfinders.com, that's where you'll see our pooches and little bios about them. Or um, you can give us a call. And the number would be, it's, it'd be the main number, 541-908-2331. Or you could give me a call, and I'm the foster coordinator, which is 541-207-3888. And um, we can let you know everything about the program and help you out. Uh, if you have somebody that is elderly and maybe losing, has lost their dog and they would like another friend, if that dog doesn't work out, we'll give another dog a try. It's, it's foolproof in that we want person to be happy and we want the dog to be happy it's not about just getting it into a home it's not about that at all it's got to be a good fit and we would never put a dog in a home that we wouldn't put our own dog in jenny sullivan with senior dog rescue this is valley talk and we were back we will be back on the program in just a moment america's most iconic quartet coming live to perform their unforgettable hits the legendary oak ridge boys 40th anniversary tour sunday august 25th at the oregon state fairs lbj comcast amphitheater in all american tradition my baby is american man. the unmistakable four part harmonies that have earned the oak ridge boys grammy dove acf and cma awards you're the one in a million 
packages are on sale now. Buy tickets online at OregonStateFair.org or charge by phone at 877-840-0457. Don't miss the Oak Ridge Boys 40th Anniversary Tour. Come on in, baby, take a coat off. Come on in, baby, take a load off. Play lottery games at the Oregon State Fair. Adults 21 and over can visit the game zone in Cascade Hall and play Scratch It, Kino, and all our jackpot games. Demo new video lottery games for fun. You'll even have a chance to win prizes. Lottery games at the Oregon State Fair, where Oregon comes together. See you there. Is the grinding starter or sputtering motor getting to you? Then see the ASC certified technicians at Kingsbury Automotive. You'll get peace of mind and competitive pricing with every expert repair. Kingsbury Automotive is inside Lebanon Toyings to 7-Eleven on South Main Street, Lebanon. Everything for your car and truck. Two fifty eight twenty two forty for Kingsbury Automotive. Unleash summer. Ah, Dennis Mid Valley YMCA in Albany. 1580. Right now you could have a YMCA three month summer membership for only ninety nine dollars for all membership types, including families. Only ninety nine dollars for a three month membership for all membership types, including families. Now at the Mid Valley YMCA in Albany. Unleash summer. Ah, ah. Call five four one nine two six forty four eighty eight now or. Log on to ymcaalbany.org. There's nothing better than local berries, especially if you don't have to do the picking. The Tequina Kiwanis Club of Albany is taking orders now for fresh strawberries, raspberries, and marionberries, and quick-frozen blueberries, marionberries, and strawberries to be delivered to a convenient pickup point in Albany. Fresh berry order deadline is June 4th. Stock up. You'll help fund many worthwhile Tequina Kiwanis projects and programs for kids. Go to Newman 76 Station on Pacific in Albany or call now, 928-6289. That's 928-6289. Now you can manage your printers as easy as you manage your copiers. Managed print services from Ultrax. Maintenance, toner cartridges, and repairs all in just one monthly payment. Hewlett Packard, Lexmark, Brother, just to name a few. All you have to do is buy the paper. It's that easy. Just call Ultrax today and ask about their managed print services. Ultrax Business Solutions, your locally owned and operated copier company, proudly supporting our community. Ultrax Business Solutions. Valley Talk, weekday mornings on News Talk 1580 KGAL. We are talking about pets, animals, dogs, Senior Dog Rescue. Jenny Sullivan with Senior Dog Rescue on Valley Talk with us today. And Jenny, thank you, thank you for what you do to help animals and likewise pets oh, and uh, people. Here it's in the very Atlanta fulfilling. Valley. It's really fun. How do you get funding? We do a number of things. Um, we do a yearly uh, benefit sale, yard sale. We get things donated from people that maybe have a garage sale and they haven't sold the, the things. We want nice things or people know of us. Hold on to things all year long and then we collect all the things or they bring them. We get a storage unit donated to us, which this, this storage unit in Corvallis um, is, um, and I can't think of the name of it, I'm sorry, but uh, they are allowing us to store things there, because not all of us have a big garage to do so. Mm -hmm. We also... How often um, do you have those sales? Once a year, okay. in September. And usually it's the week after the uh, Labor Day holiday, but I think we're doing it two weeks after this year. And if people want to find out, they can go to their website, sdro.petfinder.com? They can, because we have an event calendar there, and okay. they can check that out. And we do um, advertise as well. Uh, we do a Fall Fest, which is in Corvallis, and we have a booth there. Um, many times people will donate money. We sell things in the booth for dogs, calendars. We do a calendar every year with our dogs on the calendar. And I was amazed how many I had fostered on the last calendar. It's kind of neat to see their face every month. Um, and then we, um, any benefits, we had a, um, oh, at the college, we had some students that had to do some community type uh, fundraising. And so they set up a booth and we would bring our dogs down and people the kids that are having stress taking tests and such would come and play with the dogs to relieve stress and these would be foster dogs that we would have and they would pay money to pet the dog and play with the dog and so that was a fun one as well we do the pet um ohs um oregon state pet day um 
at the uh, veterinarian school. And that's a real fun event, too. And we bring our dogs there and let people know all about us. So there's, there's many, many ways we do. We, we latch on to anything where we can be involved with it. We're doing Pastini's um, restaurant uh, this month where 50% of, our, of their sales will go to us. Great. Mm-hmm. Well, we have a few more minutes left. We have a four, four minutes left to go in the show. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about some success stories for Senior Dog Rescue. You wanted to talk about Hobbs. Hobbs. Hobbs was a really, really old yellow lab. And I know Hobbs in the storybook was a boy, but this was a girl. And she was so arthritic, she couldn't even get up my stairs. And the lady that had to give her up was so distraught because she had this dog since a pup. And she had to move to San Francisco and live in a high rise. And just she thought it just wouldn't be fair to Hobbs to, to go that distance. So I said, don't worry, we'll find a place for Hobbs. But in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, and I learned to be humble. I'm thinking, this dog's not going anywhere. She is going to stay with me, and I'm okay with that. Mm. So Why did you think that? What was, what was wrong well, with Well, she was 12 and a half. She was really arthritic. She just, it was hard for her to move. Mm. But I got her on some arthritis medication, started taking her on some little walks. Um, she started picking up on my dog's enthusiasm because my yellow lab's younger. And she just got a little spark in her. Well, I got a call from a man. He had seen her on our website. And he says, she's the oldest dog on that website. I want to meet her. I think I want her. And I'm like, okay. So we filled out the app and we took her with us to their home in Almsville. This place was like a sanctuary. It was like a park. It was beautiful. And Hobbs just jumped out of the car and ran over to them barking like, I'm home. It was amazing. And they had two other dogs that were just as old as she was. And, of course, I could not disapprove of that house. I said, gee, take me in when it's my time. I love this. (laughs) And she just never looked back at us when we left her. It was just a wonderful, wonderful story. Wow. <laughs> uh, how much more time have we got? We've got about another 45 seconds. Real quick, uh, let's uh, contact information for Senior okay, Dog Rescue. Okay, Senior Dog Rescue, and it would be uh, SDRO, PetFinders.com. You can get in touch with me, 541-207-3888. Become a foster home. Um, you can volunteer in so many ways. You know, just... Um, it's easy, it's fun, and it's very rewarding. Thank well, you. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you for all you do. Mm-hmm. Jenny Sullivan mm-hmm. is uh, with Senior Dog Rescue. And again, their website is sdro.petfinder.com. And uh, thank you for being with us on Valley Talk today. Thank you for having me. Coming up tomorrow, if you're interested in sports, we are going to have our average investment guy, John Gibson, on the show today. And here's the sports tie-in. Um, John's going to bring a friend of his, Rob Allen, who is the longtime football and track and field coach at Lebanon High School, currently the athletic director for the school. He's going to be retiring in the next few years. Hope everybody knows that. They do now. Um, He will have some good stories to share with us. and looking forward to have uh, Rob Allen and John Gibson on uh, the show with us, Valley Talk, tomorrow. And again, don't forget June 6th, special day, uh, Normandy D-Day invasion. We're going to be doing a live show from the... um, uh, post 10, the uh, um, I'm drawing a blind blank here. The lev- the um, veterans of foreign wars, the uh, Legion post, post 10 in Albany. I'm Dave Adams. This is Valley Talk, and hope you have a good Monday. And uh, see you tomorrow. Locally owned and operated, this is the very independent News Talk 1580 KGAL, Lebanon, Albany, Corvallis.